Good evening, everyone. It's good to have you here. Our service this evening will be uh, as if it were Saturday evening. So Pentecost Eve, the, uh, our secretary who's new, she's a little confused. She's like, so are we having church on Sunday night too? I said, why? Because there's Pentecost evening in the calendar as well as a possibility. Yeah, there's all sorts of feast days that we don't celebrate, um, that we could, but we don't. And uh, Pentecost Eve is one of those, but given that, eh, just imagine it's Saturday night and you'll be just fine. So this will help prepare you for Sunday morning as well. All right. Uh, you'll need the psalm from the hymnal. So if you haven't marked the psalm, mark Psalm 85. We'll be using that. Uh, one other note is we're going to try something that we've been doing all school year with the children in the morning, but we haven't tried here, which is to sing the psalm half verse by half verse. All right, so normally we sing it, I sing a whole verse, then you sing a whole verse, right? But we, the tones are actually written so that they would be sung responsively. I sing the first half of the verse, and then you would respond. You'll, you'll hear. Ethan's going to accompany us. I didn't want to do it until I had the organist to help us out. <laughs> so you'll, you'll join in on the half verse. We'll do that both with the intro and with the psalm for the day. So just follow along. You'll be just fine. All right. Divine service setting four. I encourage you to stand. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Our help is in the name of the Lord. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed be the Lord, who daily bears us up. Alleluia. Alleluia. All kingdoms of the earth sing to God. To him who rides in the heavens, the ancient heavens. Ascribe power to God. Awesome is God from his sanctuary, the God of Israel. He is the one who gives power and strength to his people. Blessed be he, God. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. 
Blessed be the Lord, who daily bears us up. Alleluia. God is our salvation. Alleluia. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, you fulfilled your promise by sending the gift of the Holy Spirit to unite disciples of all nations in the cross and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ. By the preaching of the gospel, spread this gift to the ends of the earth. 
through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Old Testament reading is from Joel, chapter 3. For behold, in those days and at that time, when I restore the fortunes of Judah and Jerusalem, I will gather all the nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat, and I will enter into judgment with them there on behalf of my people and my heritage Israel, because they have scattered them among the nations and have divided up my land, and have cast lots for my people, and have traded a boy for a prostitute, and have sold a girl for wine, and have drunk it. What are you to me, O Tyre and Sidon, and all the regions of Philistia? Are you paying me back for something? If you are paying me back, I will return your payment on your own head swiftly and speedily. For you have taken my silver and my gold, and have carried my rich treasures, into your temples. This is the word of the Lord. Lord, you were favorable to your land. You restored the fortunes of Jacob. You forgave the iniquity of your people. You covered all their sin. You withdrew all your wrath. And from your hot anger, restore us again, O God of our salvation. Put away your indignation toward us. Will you be angry with us forever? Will you prolong your anger to all generations? Will you not revive us again? that your people may rejoice in you. Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Let me hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace to his people to his saints, but let them not turn back to folly. Surely his salvation is near to those who fear him, that glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness meet, Righteousness and peace kiss each other. Faithfulness springs up from the ground, and righteousness looks down from the sky. Yes, the Lord will give what is good, Righteousness will go before him and make his footsteps away. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever. Amen.
the epistles from Romans, chapter 8. So then, brothers, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons, by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with him in order that we may also be glorified with him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. The Holy Spirit will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Alleluia. 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 Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of the faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world will see me no more, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. In that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. This is the word of the the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ confess together by the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Lord Jesus Christ, the only God, the Son of 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 God, the Thank you. 
You may be seated. We sing the hymn of the day, Creator Spirit, by whose aid? Hymn 500. For as many of you as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Jesus warns the disciples, and so warns you too, that there will be a time that comes when anyone who kills you will think that he's doing God a favor. And we heard on Sunday why. Because they hated Jesus without cause first. Jesus knows that everybody wants to cut him out because they want to live in their own little synagogue or church without him their little la-la land where they can talk about love and do so without him. Love this and love that. All you need is love, but not the love of Jesus. And Jesus, meanwhile, knows that there's one particular kind of hate that's really deep in the heart. And it's the one that's finally going to affect the disciples and everyone who hears the gospel. So 
That's, so it comes down to what's really happening at Pentecost. What's going down at Pentecost is not just that the Holy Spirit is coming. It's why the Spirit is coming. And, why, and the way the Holy Spirit is coming is because, well, we don't want Jesus. And we were going to get rid of Jesus at any cost. And Jesus says, it's not just a couple of people. It's not just the rulers of the synagogue who are going to do this. But it's actually the whole world that's set against him and thus against you that will do this. This is not picking out any particular religion that says this, that hates Jesus. It's not picking out what we would call a particular race of people either. Jesus knows what he's up against, and he sets it straight out. I am up against the world right here, and I also know why they hate me. I know why the salvation of the world had to be fulfilled in this particular way. So then, who is the spirit that Jesus sends? You just sang about him, the paraclete, or the advocate, the comforter, the consoler. But that word paraclete does have a particular courtroom meaning, a judicial meaning. I like to translate it as, the spirit is the defense attorney, the one who defends you from prosecution. It's not just a nickname. This isn't your old pal, the Holy Spirit, over there. The advocate refers to what the Holy Spirit does for you, which is the key thing about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a person who's actually doing something, actually helping you in your need, advocating for you. Because you've got two problems. You've got other people hating you for what you say about Christ. And then, of course, you yourself, according to the flesh, don't like Christ either. So he says it. You will hate him. But then comes in the Holy Spirit, who's going to be the helper, the advocate, the counselor, the comforter to you, which is probably the most helpful thing for you. Remember, in the Lutheran tradition especially, we commonly refer to the way the gospel works in us as bringing comfort to our conscience. What we used to call, what the Bible used to call the heart, comfort to the heart, the comfort to our conscience. And the conscience, prior to the comfort of the gospel, is troubled, not at rest, not at peace. According to your flesh, you have a troubled conscience, and that troubled conscience now is a problem that it can't resolve and can't get over. Actually requires God's doing. The Holy Spirit actually has to come and give comfort to the conscience, which otherwise is now eating itself alive and cannot free itself. It wants to be free, it wants to be happy, but it cannot do it. The heart is restless until it finds its rest in Jesus. And so in comes the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit knows that the problem for you is not that you have a dream, but that you can't quite get there, or know the things that would make you happy, and you can't get enough of them or even any of the ideas about what or why people fall short in life and what they really need. None of this is known to you. It's all opaque. We're blind by nature. So the real problem is that the Holy Spirit knows you have to get over your hate for Jesus. This is what actually has to happen to you. This is the comfort the Holy Spirit has to provide. And thanks be to God, for most of us, the Spirit is given to us when we're infants, so we never know this kind of hatred. And you will not have to, to, you will not have the comfort of a true and certain conscience until you know truly and certainly what Jesus Christ is actually saying to you. In comes the Spirit for that. Not only does he raise Jesus on the third day, but you also have the 50 days and now the coming of the Holy Spirit who's actually going to tell you what Jesus thinks of you. Because unless the Spirit tells you, you wouldn't know. That's what he's doing by his word and by the gifts. That's what the coming of the Holy Spirit on Pentecost is all about. And that's the only way he can bring comfort to an otherwise troubled conscience that is constantly aware that there's a problem that it has with Jesus and suspects that Jesus has a problem with you, too. So here comes the Holy Spirit, again, going to come to you and to resolve that over and over. And it's the Spirit who sends you a preacher so that you can wrap yourself up in Jesus' word that the preacher gives to comfort you. 
All this is a way of saying that the Holy Spirit has a work, and without the Spirit, you would be left in your trespasses and sins. He has a thing to do, and that thing is to come to you in the, the present, in the moment, in a specific way, with a preacher, using a word. And that's what the Holy Spirit is all about. You'll hear it on Sunday when Peter has a word to preach, and it convicts the people, and the people beg him, what must we do to be saved? And he gives them that word of comfort. Repent, believe the gospel, be baptized. The Holy Spirit is going to do something new for you that's never happened before, just as he did on Pentecost. He takes what has been spoken by Christ already and declares it to you in the now. Of course, the Holy Spirit won't make something up. He will only declare to you what Christ has already said. He will take what is Christ's and give it to you. That's what Jesus said today. Like a big brother who robs from his little brother, the Holy Spirit has gone over and taken what's Jesus's so he can give it to you. But of course, this is what Jesus wants and what the Holy Spirit has come to do for you. Everything that the Father says about Jesus, the Holy Spirit takes and applies to you. And if he doesn't do this for you, then you would be left in your trespasses and sins. That is your hatred of Jesus. And you would be without comfort because the only thing you would have left is the question, why do I hate Christ? What did he do that's so problematic about him? The only thing you'd be left with is the law. Thou shalt and thou shalt not. Just you and the law sitting in your church talking about love this, love that, all you need is love. And then finding out that you fall short every day, every moment. Without the Holy Spirit giving you all that belongs to Jesus, without the Holy Spirit sending you a preacher, without the Holy Spirit speaking a specific word to you, you would look, around, look at Jesus and just wonder what Jesus actually thinks of you, or just be uncertain of Jesus, or maybe even, as I said, hate him, because you'd still be under the law. And he would be saying to you what the law says to you, and then you'd be quite mad at him because you would think that you've actually done something that deserves the sort of punishment that you have, the suffering and pain that you have. Or perhaps you would even think that you deserve some kind of award for all your law-keeping and your loving, which of course is false too and a false sort of comfort for your conscience. But Jesus has actually taken the law from you. And so the Holy Spirit comes to give you a new word, never heard before, a new song, as Isaiah calls it, a word that cannot be found anywhere else in any other faith, in any other word but the word of the Scripture, which is the gospel word coming from the mouth of the preacher, specifically saying something to you now. You are forgiven in the name of Jesus. The Holy Spirit declares that you are forgiven, and thereby the Spirit sets free your conscience to not hate Jesus anymore. The Holy Spirit sets you free from the law so you don't have to worry about loving your neighbor, because now you know there's no reward in it for you. You don't have to worry about it. The same goes for loving God with your whole body, mind, and spirit, and soul. You don't have to worry about that anymore either. Instead, the Holy Spirit sends a preacher, and he forgives you and sets you free to love Christ, free from the law, free from fear about what the world will do to you when you talk about Jesus, free from the fear of death, because here's the kicker, it's the Holy Spirit who will raise your dead body because when he sees you, the baptized dead, he sees only Christ and cannot resist raising you, which means he can't resist the resurrection on the last day for you either. All this is the work of the Spirit for you, setting you free to love without fear, not under compulsion, under the law, but rather by the gospel. And without the Spirit speaking, you would not know Christ nor him. But thanks be to God, he has revealed himself to you this day, and every day you hear those words, you are forgiven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We stand for the prayer of the church. Almighty, eternal, heavenly Father, 
who hast poured out thy Holy Spirit upon thy church, that he may abide with it forever, preserving it in the true faith of thy holy word and enlightening it with the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Grant unto us, as we now call upon thy name, all such things as may be necessary for our salvation. We thank thee, O God, that by thy Spirit we have been called to faith in Jesus Christ, given power to believe thy word, and gathered into the fellowship of thy holy church. Sanctify us that we, purged of our sins and unrighteousness, may not or may be meet for the Master's use and prepared unto every good work. To this end, aid us by the witness of thy Spirit to know more deeply and truly the Holy Scriptures, that we may become increasingly wise unto salvation, and help us to continue in their teachings. Enable us to flee from the prince of this world and to follow with all who serve thee in purity of heart the things that make for righteousness, faith, charity, and peace. Kindle in us a fervent desire for all that is good, all that is holy, and all that is true. Shed thy spirit upon us that we may love Jesus Christ our Savior with all our hearts and minds. Keep his words with a good conscience and find in each day the blessed experience of his nearness and abiding presence. Let the sanctifying wisdom and power of the eternal comforter descend upon thy church that she may be strong in faith. Impart to her his sevenfold gifts of grace, that her elders may have bright hopes of the time when the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord, as the waters that cover the sea, and when her young men and maidens may be granted inward visions of the holy triumphs of the gospel. Stir up thy church, O Lord, and imbue it with zeal to seek the lost, to bind up the brokenhearted, to bring comfort to the imprisoned, to heal the afflicted, and to cheer all that mourn. Give thy spirit room in all homes that he may lead every child who bears thy name into the paths of love and obedience and endow every parent with an understanding heart and gentle ways so that together the family may adorn the doctrine of our Savior with godliness and honor. Govern the nations upon the earth and help them to acknowledge thy power, dominion, and righteous judgment so that they may turn from their evil ways and live. Give unto our land and all in authority firmness in the right and steadfastness and integrity, and be thou our shield and buckler. To all in trial or tribulation, the sick, the weary, the oppressed, the fearful, the needy, and the lonely, give the peace of Christ. Let their cry come unto thee and grant them all things needful. These things and whatever else you know that we need, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I invite you to greet one another with the peace of Christ. O Lord, receive these gifts from the bounty you have provided us, that they may be used in service to your church. In Jesus' name, amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, 
O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and on all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him unto death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of Sabaoth adored, heaven and earth with full acclaim, shout the glory of your name. Sing Hosanna in the highest, sing Hosanna to the Lord. Truly blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us, and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. In these last days you have poured out your Holy Spirit on your church, that your sons and daughters might proclaim the wonders of your salvation in Christ Jesus our Lord. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon your gathered people, that faithfully eating and drinking the body and blood of your Son, we may go forth to proclaim his salvation to the ends of the earth. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen.
blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us in the same, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. Wait a second. Three people on the way out. <laughs> Turn your yellow sheet over. Did you see it? Mark your calendar. All right, good. Do you see the schedule change? Okay, good. Just half an hour earlier. Okay. All right, good night. put her out her
I know why they're shooting. I'm not that far out of the But they run into us. Yeah. <laughs> 